Hello, my name is Regine Behrusmant. I'm a theater stage design graduate from Iran and currently a master's student in fashion design management program at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia, United States. Welcome to our presentation for strategic design and merchandising class of spring 2020. Our project during this semester was to design a line for spring summer 2021 for the Italian brand Marni and my category in specific was women's ready to wear. Marni is a luxury high-end Milan-based fashion house that merges Italian fashion heritage with a modern Asian twist by creating whimsical utilitarian garments, encompassing the unconventional use of colors, materials, and prints that are incorporated with non-binary, less fitted cuts, and silhouettes to celebrate individuality and an avant-garde spread of a niche consumer within the world of fashion who can be a young or middle-aged pleasure-seeking shoppers living in urban areas. However, the main purpose of the class was to be able to find new location opportunities for the brand to expand its presence in the U.S. market after the design process and to find best locations for the stores based on the data we get by our online research on websites like Policy Map to gain information about the brand's demographics by looking at the zip codes of where the brand's stores are located. The brand currently has three own stores in New York, two in the state of California, and one in the state of Florida. Marni has an affluent customer with a majority that are celebrities, gallerists, bankers, and doctors. Also, according to sales associates of their stores in New York City, women whose age range is 35 to 50 years old form the majority of their target market. Their current target customer in the United States includes Asian and tourists, as well as local people in the regions their stores are located. Pulling out the data from these zip codes, shows some common attributes in terms of race, income, and age range of the existing customer. All these zip codes are higher in number of white Americans compared to the average of the state, also higher in number of Asians compared to the average of the state. These zip codes are higher in percentage of people in working age range compared to the average of state and higher in percentage of people with income over $15,000 compared to the average of the state. Through our physical corporate visit at the flagship store in Soho and also the meatpacking store, as well as an online survey called Wells Analysis, we could get more information about the psychographics of the existing target market. Marnie's customer are artsy, creative, independent people who look for glamour and have a penchant for unusual. Also, they are self-directed consumers who are most receptive to new ideas and technologies and enjoy the challenge of problem solving. The Marnie's current target customer has the widest variety of interests and activities as well as an international exposure. Marnie's women target customer is divided into two groups, a college girl with the age range of 18 to 26 who might or might not have independent income but is an artsy, creative, future-oriented girl that can afford the pieces. She lives in urban areas and tends to shop during sales. Her favorite styles of money are printed t-shirts. However, the women in the age range of 30 to 45 form 65% of the brand's customer and considered the loyal consumer of the brand. According to store associates, she usually shops more than one style from the physical stores. Marnie's girl is interested in photography, styling, accessories, social media, storytelling, technology, sci-fi movies, friends, and seafood. But Marnie's woman is interested in traveling, home decor, landscape design, shopping, heritage, music, philosophy, and tea. Marnie's brand competitors, in my opinion, are Selling, There is Van Noten, and Loewe. Way. Loewe Way has a variety of product categories for both men and women, has a retail presence with 150 stores worldwide, and is known for its craftsmanship and unequaled expertise with leather goods. However, 
it is over dependent on one material as a source of fabrication and has a limited color palette compared to Marni. The second competitor is There is Van Noten. This brand has only two lines for men and women's ready to wear, 17 stores worldwide and is against advertising on social media. However, it is known by its timeless appeal and distinctive design aesthetics. The brand has limited product categories and market presence, but quality and technical accomplishments are its strengths. And finally, Celine, that has a wide range of products for men and women, as well as a strong, unique personality with high quality material sourced in Italy. However, its social media strategy is unimpressive and is mostly known as a letter good company. My online brand research of the available collection on Marnie's website for women's ready to wear category provided me with information that could be helpful to know the brand's aesthetic and design my line. The data show that tops and bottoms each form more than one third of the collections, followed by dresses and outerwears, and size 2, 4, 6 are the most available sizes. I also gained information about the average price per category that helped me during the pricing process. Most of the looks are solid or printed and a smaller number is dedicated to color blocking. Black, cream, orange, blues, reds, pinks and greens have a huge portion in color palette and the fabrication is split to wovens and knits 64 to 36 percent. The next stage was doing a general trend research on silhouettes, colors, and prints that are predicted for spring summer 21 by WGSN. All of this information helped me to come up with my collection goals, which are maintaining the brand's DNA and aesthetic of having chunky, non binary, utilitarian silhouettes, as well as experimenting with rich patterns and colors. Updating the brand's collection for spring summer 21 based on the general mood and social trends that run the inspirations for colors, patterns, prints, and fabrics to bring newness. Adding silhouettes that are the white space for the brand compared to its competitors like media skirts. Incorporating circularity as a core strategy of the collection through the use of fabrics. This collection is inspired by the gamescape trend, which is about the surreal world of virtual reality that's going to extend in our life with the use of 5G. This trend updated the colors and prints through a digital vibrant lens with a soft focus and will be used on silhouettes based on the trend research for the season spring-summer 21. This collection is inspired by urban fast-paced life, digital and virtual reality, as well as architecture and light, with a fun, expressive, brave, joyful, and future-oriented attitude. The colors are divided into basic neutral colors and artificial hues with unnatural intensity as core colors. The prints are optical and dynamic, abstract with a digital filter, and include marbling. Floral and animal prints are updated in an abstract, artificial way through a virtual lens with a soft focus. Also in my collection, tops have the biggest proportion and the number of dresses are more compared to the brand's research, with less number of outerwear due to the season. Also, circularity as a core strategy for the collection and as a way to close the loop of design made of limited resources would be incorporated through the use of responsible fabrics such as designing for monomateriality or recyclable materials like recycled polyester instead of polyester, organic cotton or blends of chopped silk with cotton in addition to the use of responsible chemistry and conscious fabric dyeing. My inspiration board shows the general mood inspired by the virtual reality, colors on the screen, and inspiration for floral, marble, and out-of-focus prints, as well as pointing to the silhouettes I'm going to use and design for my line. Its name, Illumined Pleasures, is taken from a painting of the surrealist painter Salvador Dali. In this board, I suggest the colors, prints, and solid fabrics based on my concept, inspiration board, and trend research. And in this board, there are 25 styles that would be edited down to 15 based on the target market survey results. 
Eight people who were considered the potential customer of the brand were surveyed, and it resulted in dropping four dresses, four tops, four bottoms, and two outerwears, and adding five new styles that were consistent with the inspiration and concept of the collection. Also, the results show that Vital Green, Quiet Wave, and Aqua Blue are liked less, and Black, Fire Red, blue beads and purple nitro are popular hues. As dropping some colors would hurt the balance and general mood of the collection, which is so bright, and I have three green hues, I decided to just drop the vital green. So, the prints associated with this color or inconsistent with the collection were also dropped. This slide shows final color palette featuring 12 hues as well as the final prints that are marble prints, abstract animal prints, modeled floral prints, digital stripes, and placement digital flower. And this style features final assortment, including 15 styles. Based on the line sheets, we can see the final line skews. And now we have 15 top skews, 13 pants, 8 dresses, and 6 outerwears. To find the best locations and zip codes for the allocation in the United States, we need to look back once more at the demographics of the existing store locations and compare them to the zip codes that have the most luxury malls or boutiques, especially uh, from brands competitors in new locations we are getting to. The information pulled out from the reports shows similar results, with one or two exceptions in Hawaii, which is reasonable as it is a travel destination. Atlanta is our first opportunity. This location has Phipps Plaza as a big mall with high-end fashion brand boutiques. However, there is a multi-brand store opportunity, which is Neiman Marcus, in about 1 mile or 20 minutes walk, which is a good option to be used to sell more and make more revenue with some limited but popular SKUs like printed t-shirts and shirts paired with limited number of bottoms and dresses to tell the story of the collection. Aslanta has an urban style and equal opportunity for both a street style inspired by hip-hop music culture and formal style for working women as well as equal opportunity for printed and solid and structural and free-flowing silhouette. Hawaii has a resort style and longer spring-summer season. Um, in Hawaii, free-flowing silhouettes, floral prints, and jackets for the nights are popular. Boston is the third opportunity with a shorter spring-summer season, which had me consider one less inventory turn for it compared to the first two opportunities. It has an urban, professional, and formal style, and darker shades and solids, as well as jackets, shorts, and outerwears are more popular. Here is the allocation for a store grade A in Atlanta. It has one door, 42 SKUs, 0 to 10 size range, and doubled popular size run, with tops as the most SKU in store. This store has four time inventories from February to July. Here is the multi-brand opportunity in Atlanta, which is called A1. It has one door, 13 SKUs, 0 to 10 size range, with double popular size run. It has four times inventory from February to July, and tops are the biggest category in this store. And this slide shows the allocation for a store grade B with one door, 31 SKUs. It has 0 to 10 size range with doubled popular sizes per inventory. It has four times inventory from February to July and tops are the biggest category in the store too. And finally, the store grade C in Boston with one door, 24 SKUs, three times inventory from February to July with tops as the biggest category in the store. This store has zero to 10 size range with double popular sizes. In this slide, you can see all the allocations, informations of different opportunities together. And it's important to mention that the size run and inventory turns are based on the information given to us during our corporate visit at Marnie's stores in New York. 
In this allocation, the size one is doubled for printed t-shirts because the printed t-shirts are popular between younger Asian customer and due to its lower price point, it can sell more than other styles. Also, some styles like corset top, puff shoulder, blouse, and some bottoms don't have any size 10, considering the psychographics, body type, and the style of Marnie's customer in the US. Here you can see that this is a 4,035,000 opportunity. The total units across all stores are 3,780. There are 42 total SKUs in a store opportunity, 15 styles in the collection, and 4 doors in total. There are 31 price points in this line, and longest sleeve wrap jackets have 10% of the total retail price, followed by the pleated maxi dresses with 5%. Also, the pleated maxi asymmetrical skirt has the least amount of share of the retail price. In this slide, you can see the unit count versus the unit retail. 1090 and 690 are the price points with the most number of SKUs in the line, and 1790 and 1690 are the price points with the least number of SKUs in the line. After the merchandising phase, we had to tell the story of the collection through our marketing ideas. The marketing and promotional editorials are telling the story of the concept of the surreal world of virtual reality while incorporating circularity as the core strategy for the collection of Spring Summer 21, highlighting the importance of using organic fabrics, recycled plastics, and upcycled materials that are used to create the collection's fabrics, while maintaining the brand's mood and aesthetic of marketing. The lookbook also suggests the looks that can be paired with each other to match both the concept and the mood of the collection in addition to Marnie's girls' and women's styles as a day, evening, or nightwear. Layering corset top on shirts and t-shirts as well as wearing oversized pieces and stripes with florals are key in the lookbook. Thank you for your time and attention. Any comment, feedback, or question is appreciated.